Greetings out there. Thank you for connecting to New Dawn Ministries TV. And tonight we'll be discussing soul ties through sex. So last time we spoke about this concept of soul ties. We spoke about how soul ties get formed. And most importantly, we spoke about that soul ties are not necessarily bad in themselves. However, as you'll see in tonight's episode, Satan can take advantage of what God has established. Now, this talk tonight, we are talking about how soul ties can get are facilitated and accelerated and deepened by an, a sexual act, especially a sexual act that takes place outside marriage. Now, we live in a times where there's a high um, um, activity of sexual acts. I mean, if you look at the imagery, if you look at the, uh, uh, I mean, if you go on Facebook, if you go on, on YouTube, if you go on TikTok, there's a lot of sexual acts or sexual ideas and thoughts that are imposed on us, you know, even if you are not going to look for such things, but certain ideas, sexual thoughts are embodied in our minds, in our images. And all of these things is Satan's tactic to entrap you through a process of soul tie into those um, sexual immoral behavior. Now, I want to kick off tonight's discussion by reading the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. If you want to follow me, we'll be reading it in the message translations. And it says here, there is more to sex than mere skin on skin. Sex is as much a spiritual mystery as a physical fact. This is profound because this tells us that sex is beyond just a, a physical pleasure. But sex is a facilitation of a spiritual bond between two souls. If you want to accelerate a soul tie between two souls, sex is a tool or sex is a ritual that can facilitate such a process. And if this sexual act happens outside marriage, what happens is that that soul tie will automatically take place. In other words, when two people are engaging sexually, it doesn't matter whether they are married or not married, but a soul tie will form and this soul tie will be a very strong bond. Hallelujah. Now listen to the uh, uh, rest of this verse. It says, as it is written in scripture, the two become one. This is important. So what this means, it means when there's a sexual act, the two souls will become one. Why? Because there will be a soul tie that will connect the two souls. And let's take it further. What also what this means, it means that the witness of one partner will be transferred into the second partner through a bridge of a soul tie. So if one has unclean spirits what, or, or demonic spirits, those spirits, those weaknesses will be transferred into the next person, especially when this sexual act happens outside marriage. And to take it even further, if the two people are engaging sexually and they are also engaging sexually outside of each other, all those other partners as well, whom these two people have engaged sexually with, they will also transfer the witnesses of those people into themselves. And that's why um, it's so important to understand the implication of a sexual act that takes place um, outside marriage. And this is what we, tie, what we call an ungodly soul ties. And Satan knows this very well. And Satan seeks to ensure that people's uh, spiritual life is weakened through a process of an ungodly soul tie. I, I, I can count so many people. They love God. They come to church. However, outside their lives or, in, or, or their private lives, they are engaging in an immoral sexual acts. And what happens is they can't progress 
because their souls is connected to certain individuals who um, they are connecting with uh, sexually. And what happens now is the weakness of those people comes and, and enters into these believers and they seem not to progress. And the key is to terminate, is to repent, is to cut those ungodly soul ties so that your life can progress. And the Bible makes it quite clear. It says sex is not just a, a physical act, um, but it's a spiritual mystery that facilitates a connection between two souls. I've also noted down here that even in the kingdom of darkness, when people ought to be initiated into satanic um, churches or cult, um, sex is used as a tool to facilitate a covenant. You know, that's how deep this thing goes. Because these demonic spirits, they intend to unite themselves with you through the act of an illegal sex or an immoral sex. Now, if you go into the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 28, Jesus says here, yeah, But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery in their, in, with her in his heart. So, it so because sex is beyond the physical act, it's actually a spiritual matter. Even sexual thoughts are last when you participate in things like pornography and all those things. What tends to happen is that you are also uniting your soul with whoever you are watching. Whatever imagery, whatever pictures that you are engaging in, there is a facilitation. Jesus puts it quite plainly. He says here, you have already committed adultery in your own heart. In other words, you've created a tie or you've created a breach that connects your soul into someone else's souls, even if you've not acted physically with them. And that's why it's so important to protect against what we watch, what we listen, and, and, and what we think. So it's important to protect ourselves and ensure that we live a sexually pure life. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33, it says, Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Now, this verse, is, it, you never read it the other way around. It never says good um, character um, influences bad company. It's never that way. It's always a bad company corrupts good character. Why? Because a good character, it compromises itself when it engages in an ungodly soul tie. And because it has co compromised itself, what happens then now, Satan takes an advantage and he claims a legal right to weaken a good character. Hallelujah. So it is important to protect ourselves in terms of whom we engage with, how we spend our time, what we look at, what we listen to, and most importantly, even what we entertain in the secret of our thoughts. Hallelujah. I want to pray. Maybe you are here and you are struggling with a sexual um, immoral behavior. It could be something that you are watching. It could be someone that you are staying with and you are not married to them, but you are engaging with them sexually outside the covenant of God. Maybe you are here and you are struggling and you formed soul ties with other people and you engaged um, in a sexual act outside marriage. I want to pray for you because there's grace. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to pray for the, whoever is watching here and they need the strength and the grace of God to break and to cut the ungodly soul ties that they may have formed. I pray right now, Lord Jesus, that you give them grace, that you give them power, that, Lord God, you open up um, doors so that they may escape um, the trap of the enemy. I pray in the name of Jesus, the blood that was shed for them is more powerful than all those ungodly soul ties that they may have formed. In Jesus' name, I pray that they will break free. I pray, oh God, even those who are struggling, they try to break these soul ties, but it's so hard. I pray you give them grace and power. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let's connect again next week. 
we'll be um, still continuing on this topic of soul ties. Um, there's so much that I believe God wants to impart on all of us. Every Tuesday, this is New Dawn Ministries. TV.